Hello, I'm Brad Spicer, President of SAFE Consulting. One of the most disturbing aspects of a secondary attack is that it preys on the good intentions of school personnel who are attempting to protect students from a threat. Nothing is more intuitive than the desire to evacuate students at the sounding of a fire alarm or have them gather outside the school after receiving a bomb threat. In the event of a fire or the discovery of a suspicious package, those are not only reasonable actions, but one would be considered criminally negligent not to enact them. It is the bogus alarm or the baseless bomb threat that should lead school officials to consider the possibility of a secondary attack. Secondary attacks have been a part of warfare, both conventional and unconventional, for as long as man has engaged in battle. Approximately 25 years ago, secondary attacks directed at emergency response personnel began to occur more frequently in the form of secondary explosive devices. It wasn't until March 24, 1998 in Jonesboro, Arkansas, when 13-year-old Mitchell Johnson and his cousin, 11-year-old Andrew Golden, brought secondary attacks into our nation's schools. As Johnson and Golden waited in the nearby woods, an accomplice pulled the West Side Middle School fire alarm during lunch. As the students were evacuated, they were shot ambush style, killing four students and one teacher while wounding 10 others. Just over one year later, a secondary attack on a high school was planned using over 70 explosive devices. It is unclear as to whether the explosives were to be the main focus of the attack or supplemental to the use of firearms, but the explosives failed and the two attackers, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, murdered 12 students and one teacher before committing suicide. When you are confronted with an event that poses immediate danger, action should be taken to confront the issue at hand, while secondary attack countermeasures depending on your resources, may be delayed. However, when confronted with a situation that may present danger, such as a bomb threat or fire alarm, integrating secondary attack countermeasures into the response is strongly recommended. Should you have any questions regarding your school's response to an emergency and or secondary attack countermeasures, contact your local public safety officials or SAFE Consulting. Thank you and stay safe.